afternoon, everyone. I'm Chandra Weigel, Associate State Director of Outreach and Advocacy. Thank you so much for joining us. I wanted to um, introduce uh, these two ladies. They started um, with us last year, um, Vernita Harris and Beatrice Moore. And they're, the name of the series that they have curated for AARP is called Brunch, Lunch, and Munch. So, so without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Beatrice Moore and Vernita Harris. Welcome everyone to season two of Brunch, Lunch, and Munch with B and V. We are so happy to be with you today and to talk about um, our African culture and, and food that actually came out of Africa and spices and help you look at how you can incorporate those into your menus and, and just change up some things. So we're gonna get to work, but I'm gonna let B go ahead and do her intro. Hello, everyone, and we are so excited to be back today. As Bernita said, we have some great ideas to celebrate Black History Month, uh, not just the month of February, but all year long, and give you some uh, background information and educational tips about the foods that came out of Africa. And in doing our research on the foods that came from Africa, there is a lot of food that doesn't get the credit. And so you just might be surprised. I have my tray. Uh, some of the things that we're using today or talking about today. Watermelon, of course, and Bernita will go into a little bit more detail about that. We have the yams, which most of us are familiar with, and Bernita's got some information for you about that. We also have the okra. Um, again, Bernita will talk about that. I have black eyed peas and coffee. Who knew? So many people think coffee comes from South America. Well, that's, that's where most of it is harvested now, but it actually came out of Ethiopia. And that's where it has its roots, its beginnings. And then of course, like everything else, things migrated as uh, the trade industry expanded across the globe as it was it, at that time of the um, our historical periods that we're thinking about. But then the black eyed peas. So to for you, I'm going to prepare a marinated black eyed pea salad, a whipped coffee. Vernita is going to prepare some uh, menu options that include the sweet potato versus the yam, and also a hibiscus drink. I will prepare a stuffed yam for you guys. So Vernita, I'm going to turn it over to you because I have something in the oven I need to attend to. So I'll see you on the other side. Okay, you check that in the oven, B, and I'm going to go ahead and get us started with a cocktail because we all start with a drink. So what I'm going to do is make two options, an adult version and an everybody's version of, of a hibiscus drink. So in the adult version, and I put them in two different pitchers, so you'll be able to tell the difference in when you're serving and when you can get your non, where you need to keep your non-adults away from. So the adult version, I'm starting out with lemonade. And so I just have a couple of cups of lemonade or however, this is a one to taste. So you can do this to taste. Now, hibiscus, um, it's out of, it's, it's a flower and it's a flower fruit and it's edible. And it comes from all around the world, but you also have them grown in Africa too. Now, if you are in, um, West Africa is known as bicep, B-I-S-S-A-P, bicep. And if you were out of Jamaica or Trinidad, it's called sorrel or sorrel. So uh, I have to ask my Jamaican friends exactly how to pronounce it. So I have two different types of hibiscus because I'm going, you probably saying, what, what, what do you mean hibiscus? What, what do we get? So this is just a hibiscus, basically soda. And hibiscus has a kind of sour taste. So it's, it's uh, an acquired taste, but you can, you can make it uh, to whatever you need it to be. So I'm gonna take this one. This is a soda one now. I don't know if you can find this in the States or not, but this one is out of England and uh, it is an English brand. So you know that I'm in the Bahamas, so I get different options from those that you get in the States. So, but I did check local groceries and their websites around the Houston area, 
And so I know that you can easily find hibiscus in some shape, form, or fashion. So this one, I'm just going to add the syrup, I mean the uh, soda, to my lemonade. And this is just a regular lemonade. And so that I can have it to be the adult version. And it depends on what adults you're working with, but you can uh, flavor it up. Now, this is a coconut rum, and this is a, a rum uh, named Zell. And just to let you know, this is an African-American brand that uh, has a Caribbean base, but it's a coconut rum. And since it's Black History Month, I was just going to show you some of the products that we actually are responsible for. And because I know that it's sour, but I've added the rum, so the rum will be a little sweet. And I know that the lemon, um, uh, the lemonade is tart because that's the way uh, lemonade generally comes. I have frozen some pineapples, and I'm going to drop those pineapples in there to add a little sweetness. Now remember, this is your adult beverage. So you wanna keep your adult beverage separate from the beverage for those who want something that's not alcoholic. So in the non-alcoholic, I'm gonna just take a picture, I filled it with ice and I have sparkling water, just sparkling water, plain old sparkling water, no flavor. And I'm gonna add that to my picture. Depend on how much you make. You know, you can do a liter, half liter. That's what I'm going to add. And then these are hibiscus syrup. So it has a little sweetness to it because it's in a syrup. So, and I can, I can get one of these flowers out. I'll show you what the flowers look like. Okay, everybody. I really want to see what the flowers look like because I don't want to wait. We'll find another one. Two left in here. Okay. And this is the hibiscus flower. It's just a little purple flower. So that's where you get your purple coloring from. Now, one more. I'm going to mix it up. And again, this is a syrup and it has uh, some sweetness to it. And it says, it says, it claims, I didn't say this, but they claim that it has a, um, a calming uh, effect and it helps lower the blood pressure. That's a claim. I did not see it written on the FDA anywhere, but that's a claim. So, that's my disclaimer for that. So I know, again, I want to add flavor. Here's another option. So I'm going to add some orange slices to help counter that tartness and the sourness of the flowers. And it makes for a nice picture and a different punch when the family's over or Sunday dinners or you just want to do something a little differently. And again, I made a difference between the one that has the adult beverage and the one that's not alcoholic. So we'll get those poured up and get those prepared to serve. And I'll put them in different glasses also. So if you get one of this glass, that's another way of knowing that that's an adult beverage. Change up your glasses. We have another slice of orange in there just to make sure that you get some. So that's what we have in regards to our drink. So we have our refreshments ready. B, are you ready to go or you want me to go with another? I'm ready. Okay. I am ready. Can, can you hear me? Yes. All right, great. So I'm going to do the black eyed pea salad. And one of the things that we must understand black eyed peas is that they're full of fiber. 
They have lots of nutrients that we need. They, when you buy them dry, the shelf life is like forever almost. So it is a good state to have around the house. Many of us have become used to having the John version of the black eyed pea where you have the ham and uh, the onion and you cook it in a slow cooker or you cook it on the stove top for a long period of time. That's how most of us uh, became familiar with eating black eyed peas. But today I want to give you a different option. And some of you may have had a marinated black eyed pea salad, but it's a great substitute or addition to a party tray if you want to have the appetizers and chips and dips and is very nutritional. So we start off with our canned black eyed peas and I just do a really good rinse to get all of that, uh, the residual from the can uh, off of them. So they're basically just washed uh, multiple times in a colander, rinse them off and I put them in the fridge overnight because I did want them cold, all right? We also have one red bell pepper, one green bell pepper, and also a yellow bell pepper. And I made sure I a medium-sized bell pepper because sometimes the bell peppers are ginormous in size and you may not need a whole one. You may just need to use half of that. But it's really up to you. We just have our measurements there as a jumping off place. And so then you take control over the things that you like. Some people may not want that much bell pepper. Absolutely, you can delete it or decrease it. We also have onion and the sweet onion. Make sure you use the sweet onion or another substitute could be red onion or shallots. Either way, it's a winner, but this uh, is the way to go. And it's a half of a sweet onion and the sweet onions aren't uh, very large. Garlic, now I tend to love garlic and you know, garlic has so many benefits to it. So the more garlic I can have, the better. And we also have Aroma tomato, which they have a, a pretty good shelf life as well. They are not as juicy as some of the other types of tomatoes, which means they really go well in some of the recipes where you're doing some kind of dip. And so I did see the tomato, as it says in the recipe. And so I have chopped that up right there. And of course, cilantro. Now, some people don't like cilantro. You can substitute parsley, but uh, either one of those, you do want something green in there uh, just to liven it up a bit. Another substitute could be arugula. Uh, so, you know, it's all what your taste buds like. Well, you have the basic recipe and Chandra, I think we have put that uh, in the confirmation email. Somebody just put that in the message. I just saw the chat. So the recipes are out there. Now, the other thing that we always talk about is color and all of the colors of the rainbow of food we want to incorporate. So you see, we have these yellows and greens and reds. The more color you can incorporate into your food, you're getting a more balanced meal as far as nutrients are concerned. So this is such an easy recipe. What I'm going to do is transfer my black peas into a larger bowl. And I wouldn't necessarily put this bowl out for serving. I would put out a little bit at a time because you want to keep the marinated salad refrigerated. I've already pre-measured all of my ingredients. So basically I'm just gonna be able to drop these in. Now I do know that at some grocery stores you can purchase the bell peppers already chopped if that's your preference, then do so. But it is going to cost you a little bit more money uh, for that. So you're paying for the preparation. I just, I'm really old school and I love to cook. So I don't mind doing all of that chopping by hand. It's actually a stress reliever. And I, I bet you somebody out there said, I'll buy the chopped. <laughs> it's okay. It's all your preference. And so, 
I'm going to add my last of these ingredients in. Give it a quick stir. And even with just that quick stir, I haven't put in my wet ingredients yet, but you can see that is already. All right. And I just saw in the chat, we were asking people to please mute in case you forgot to do that. All right. So thank you. So that's how colorful it is. Now I need to do the dressing. I have a little bit of salt and pepper already mixed together. Human, which of course is one of those ingredients, either you love it or you don't. And you can put as much or as little in the I would say about the dressing, because I am mixing it separately, a little bit at a time, that way you can gauge your taste buds. Well, I have balsamic vinegar, and I also have red wine vinegar. And again, the measurements are going to be included in the link or the uh, email that you got with the confirmation. And I just saw something in the chat. Someone was asking me a question. Uh, could you serve on a bed of lettuce? Absolutely, because it's not going to be sloppy wet because you don't have that many uh, wet ingredients. So yeah, we can definitely serve it on a bed of lettuce. Uh, you can also get um, purple cabbage because it's so thick and the leaves, and if you get a nice size purple cabbage and pull a couple of the leaves off, they actually make a nice cup where you can put dips and things that into the uh, purple cabbage uh, leaves. I make a wrap because so many of us are eating healthy and, and during the season of Lent. And so you can wrap it. I would suggest add a uh, paint, perhaps, uh, a creamy base or something to it just to enhance the flavor. Hummus is always a good option. And you could add any veggies to it that you want or just go solo with this as a wrap. Totally up to you. So I have my, the rest of my olive oil and I need a good stir to mix it together really well. And as you can see, it's not a lot in there. And then I just add it in there. Basically, it's about a half a cup of liquids that are being added in. I give it another good toss. And I can always add more olive oil or either of the vinegars. Just taste it, uh, see if you need more salt. And that's why I always like to add a little bit at a time. And you will be able to gauge where you need to stop. So the thing about this is it really needs to go into the fridge for a couple of hours. So all of those flavors, and we've got a lot of different flavors in here, and you want all of those flavors to meld <clears throat> together. So there we go right there. And the show is over. I have this plated with some ideas for how to present it for a party, or because this is brunch and much with uh, B and B, sometimes we just have that good old wrong. We have some snacks out because we are watching television, and so I have it for you already prepared to give you some ideas. So I'm going to turn it. Uh, back over to Bernita, who's going to give you some more ideas and tips and share her uh, next dish with you. And in the meantime, I've got to get cooking for the next segment. Okay, so Bernita, it's all yours. Okay, so what we'll do now is talk about yams and sweet potatoes. This is a sweet potato and this is a yam. Now they come in different forms. There are about five to 10 different forms of a yam and um, uh, about 20 different forms of the sweet potato. And people don't understand the difference of the two. So we're gonna talk about it a little bit. And 
This one is, is a regular one. You probably say, well, that looks like a sweet potato that you have in your hand. No, it, no, it's not. The yam is usually longer and tubular and it is white and starchy, where the sweet potato is more chunky and round and, and smoother, where the yam is scaly. Now, the difference, there are different nutritional factors in there because this one, again, is more starchy, so you have to pay attention. But the yam has more benefits and um, it's full of different vitamins. And the yam is from Africa and the sweet potato is from Asia. Now, of course, they made it to, the yams made it to uh, the Caribbean and America through the slave through slave trade and slave uh, ships. But the difference is many people can't tell the difference because when they say you're having candy yams, the FDA makes them put on the can that you're actually having a sweet potato because yams are normally not sweet, but sweet potatoes are. Now, of course, they've been uh, messing with uh, the breeding and, and, and making all kinds of hybrids and whatnot uh, out there in different forms and, and, uh, of uh, potatoes and yams and combining them where they're so close that they almost look like the same, except when you cut into a yam, a yam will be white and a sweet potato will be orangey and come in purple colors, but there's totally a difference in them and they're from two different continents. And uh, we often get them confused and, uh, and uh, just know that our yams are from Africa where our sweet potatoes are from Asia. And that helps with a long, confusing uh, history in regards to the yam and potato. But look at, look at a can when you buy candied yams, and look to see that it also says sweet potato on there because it, the FDA won't allow them to, uh, to go without the, without the double labeling. So that's just a little history and, and a little known facts in regards to the sweet potato and yam. Now I do have a uh, yam that I have cooked and I have just baked it. And B and I are gonna show you two different options and two different things that you can do with the actual yam. I have yam and B has a sweet potato. So, and they're two different things and we're gonna work with those. But while we're also talking there, I'm gonna to talk to you a little about the seasons that come out of Africa. And two of the seasons that I chose to highlight and feature this time was sesame seeds and cinnamon. Yes, they're both out of the Sudan, Northern area. They, they grow in, drought like uh, climate and then they've gone from Sudan on over and everything some kind of way ended over in uh, Indonesia and Sri Lanka. And those became known as the spice capitals and a lot of trading that was done there for spices. But these um, uh, originally came out of Africa. Now the sesame seeds, they have the highest content of oil from any of the seeded uh, plants that you'll find and they have a nutty flavor so if you have allergies to um, nuts be careful and stay away from the uh, sesame seeds if you have those allergies so make sure you test out and you'll find the sesame seeds in hamburger buns bagels breads uh, that's how they used a lot in America but in Japan and China are two of the biggest uh, importers of these seeds. And you can tell in their food and their sushis uh, how you can see the sesame seeds. So, uh, but no, that's, that's out of Africa. Those are originally out of Africa. And the same thing for the cinnamon. And the cinnamon comes out of a tree. And the cinnamon does have some health benefits because it does, uh, I mean, you can, trace uh, cinnamon back as far as King Tut uh, who used cinnamon. But now you can use cinnamon in everything, in your breads, your cereals, uh, your drinks, uh, liqueurs. Cinnamon has a, a wide range of use, but again, 
Sudan, Africa. And that's where most of, uh, that's where these two particular come from and have been documented. Um, I actually have a yam and a sweet potato, but I decided I did bake the yam. <laughs> now, when you bake a yam, you've got two options. You can put it in the oven, and I know sometimes it just makes it so hot depending on what time of year it is and where you live. So if that's like, no, it just creates too much heat for that one or two sweet potatoes, the microwave is an option. And so with my yam, let me and get it. It's already been baked in the microwave. And so you can see how large it is. And this one took five minutes. I would suggest put it on four to five minutes, then let it rest for about a minute because once you turn the microwave off or once it's finished, the whatever the product is, it's still cooking. So don't start the microwave up when you, you want to pierce it with a knife to see if the knife will all the way through and come out. And if it's almost done, leave it in for about another minute and then check it again before you restart the microwave because what you may do is cook it. And because these ends are so small compared to the rest of the body, of the potato, these will start to harden because they're being overcooked. So you wanna be really careful, all right? So I don't have a preference about the process for cooking either or for me. Well, I have my yam and I might be a little different from many of you guys, but I do eat the skin. I eat the skin of my sweet potatoes, my yams, my yellow potatoes, my purple potatoes, all of them, because the skin is where most of the nutrients are found in these root vegetables. Same thing for carrots and parsnips and so on and so forth. So I have my yam and I'm going to mash the interior a bit. I don't use butter because I want a healthy option, but that's up to you. And I don't use sugar <laughs> because it's naturally sweet. And so I have my yam and because this is a stuffed yam, I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper, just a pinch of the cayenne pepper. Now, some of us want more than a pinch. That's certainly up to you. As a matter of fact, when I heat this up again for my lunch, it's going to be more than a pinch. <laughs> but I didn't want anybody to see, oh my God, look at all that cayenne pepper she put on there. You don't have to do that. Cumin. Again, my cumin. Now, what you can do is in the cayenne pepper, the cumin, and some brown sugar together, keep it in a container. It's a great rub or salmon, and it's great on a sweet potato or a yam as well. This is a sweet and savory option for you. So now I'm going to add, the recipe calls for arugula. Well, we will glitch uh, with the shopping because Bernita lives in the Bahamas and sometimes they don't have everything. And so this morning we had to go to plan B. And so I, We'll use kale as a substitute for arugula. My preference is the arugula, but kale makes a great substitute. So with the kale, because kale is very tough, I will suggest marinating the kale in lemon juice and some olive oil and a little bit of seasoning. Yes, someone put in there, can you use spinach? Absolutely. And that's softer, easier to digest. And so with the kale, you will need to marinate it, lemon juice, olive oil overnight to soften it up. So as you eat the kale, you'll be able to receive the full benefit of the food because it's very difficult for the body to break down raw kale. So that sometimes we steam it, and then we do that, but I like to marinate it overnight. We're gonna to top it off with a little bit of 
goat cheese or feta cheese, or blue cheese, whatever your preference is. Now you do know the blue cheese is, it does have a higher fat content. All right. I eat spinach stuffed sweet potatoes all the time. Absolutely. So we have this. If you want a little bit more seasoning on it, a little bit more flavor, you can dust it with some red pepper flakes. Totally up to you. Well, right now, there's my stuffed sweet potato. Again, look at the colors, guys. We've got the orange. And the oranges are good uh, for the eyes. Uh, the green, which is good for the digestive system because it's got the fiber and it also it has natural detoxification agents. That's why when so many times we are trying to detox, it is basically a green diet that we follow. And lighten up on the cheese. <laughs> so using cheese is a better option. And I know there are some non-dairy cheese out there for those vegans that are out there, Shonda. <laughs> so thinking about you. And <laughs> so we have those options out there. Now, I had prepared some tomato and cucumber salad that would make a great side. And with this cucumber tomato salad, it's just cucumbers, red onion, celery. And I did put a, a couple of jalapeno peppers in here and some chili paste, some Thai chili paste. The chili paste is sweet. It's not, it's sweet. And by just adding that Thai chili paste to the marinated uh, cucumber tomato salad, you kind of come up with something that's just gonna tickle your taste buds because sometimes we eat the same old thing the same old way and we get bored. Some of us don't, some of us do, but that's just another option. Well, I'm not finished yet because what I want to add is a side of roasted okra. And let me show you how easy this is. I'm gonna put this over here. I've got my okra already clean. And I'm just gonna take the whole okra and cut it lengthwise and place it in my baking sheet. I do have a rack because the rack simply allows this not to sit in oil and get soggy. It really cooks it up much crispier than it would if it were sitting in the bottom of the pan. And of course, you can line your pan with parchment paper to make cleanup a lot easier. And with this okra, it all, I know some people are thinking, oh my gosh, okra is so slimy. This one will not be slimy because you're going to roast it in the oven. And when you roast a lot of these vegetables like okra, cauliflower, butternut squash, uh, Brussels sprouts, foods that some people say, I don't like them. Well, maybe it's the preparation that you've had that caused you not to like it. So before you totally abandon them, try roasting. And that roasting just caramelizes. It brings out a lot of the sweetness that you miss when it's cooked on a stove top and really drowning in liquids. So all I did was cut my okra lengthwise and I'm going to spray it with some olive oil spray. And that way you're not wasting anything and you have a lot of control. Well, uh, can you air fry in lieu of oven roasting? I have not personally done that. I do have an air fryer. I'm pretty sure it will work. But uh, whoever that was that said that, I want to hear from you when you try it, and I'll try it too. So then on. I'll try it before the next class. All right. So I'm just taking on some seasoning. And because this is on top of the seasoning, does fall through. But it's just cut. It's on the pan. And we're just going to throw it in the oven. I have my oven on roast and through the magic of as that goes in, voila, 
already have these done. So this is a smaller pan, uh, not very many of them. I, what is it? One, two, three, I had six, six of them. And they cook up, oh my gosh, I just eat these like potato chips. I will get a whole little fresh okra, not frozen. And I will just roast them like this. And these are like my new best friend when I don't want to do all of those potato chips and things like that. So I'm just going to put those on the side. And I do want to get a little bit more green because you can never. And and washed again, greens to this plate. And voila, there you have it. A nice light brunch or munch that you can sit and enjoy. And you don't even need any ranch dipping sauce or anything for that okra. I did use Cajun seasoning, but I have come across this no salt brand. Be very careful, read the packages. Um, I see, it. okay, can you season with garlic powder? Yes, lemon and the okra, I would say try it before you buy it. <laughs> no, just put a little bit on one or two to check it out before you put it all, all, all over everything and it might work for you. But definitely the garlic will work. This no salt brand here does not have the potassium. Sometimes when you purchase salt-free or salt substitutes, the potassium levels are off the charts and can do you just as much harm as good. So as Renita said about sweet potatoes versus yams, we've got to become readers of labels. Avocado oil, yes, because it does have a high burn point. Uh, Grapeseed oil, high burn point. The different avocado, oils, read the labels and see what the burn is. When you roast, I typically roast 375, 400 degrees. Um, I don't have a preference. Of, oh, which brand did you use for the no salt? This is the Tony Saturate no salt. I don't advertise, but you asked the question and there it is. And it does not have, it, it is zero potassium. And it's not hot, it's not spicy with heat, it's just spicy with flavor. And so it's a great um, comp, uh, spice to you. The okra goes in for about seven to 10 minutes, depending on the temperature you're using uh, for the okra and how big the okra is. Seven minutes if there's four pieces of okra, but on the average, no more than 10. Check it when they start to turn brown, take them out. So we don't want them to stay too long. And when they're done, remove from the heat source because even if they're done, you turn the oven off, they're gonna to continue to cook and they're gonna shrivel up <laughs> and they're gonna look awful. They'll probably still taste good, but they're gonna shrivel up to nothing. So you still want a piece of okra that you know has retained its size and its shape. And no ranch dipping sauce needed for me. Some of you might want the ranch, and that's okay. But for me, no. And this is a perfect meal. I've got my cucumber tomato salad with a little Thai chili sauce and the greens and so forth. Uh, the question was, how long do you microwave the yams? Five minutes, but remember, that yam was about the length of my hand. Like she froze for a minute. Go all the way through. Let, let it rest for a minute in the microwave before you give it another minute because it's still cooking. All right. So uh, I'm going to over to uh, Bernita, but I do want to say this about the Black Eyed Peas. Uh, they may help lower your blood pressure. They can help you to maintain weight because they're so full of fiber. And it is a natural way to lower cholesterol. Again, it's the fiber. 
and support eye health and skin health. And I was told this one time, and I also read it later on, that when you look at some of the foods you eat, if it reminds you of a part of the body, it's probably good for that part of the body. And look at black eyed peas. What do they look like? They look like little eyes. And so do olives. And so they <laughs> they tend to be good for all laughing at me. <laughs> if anybody yes. else has heard that, would you please put in the chat that B is not crazy? <laughs> but at any rate, so those are some of the things that uh, they can help you with. And when I when I turn back over to Bernita, when I come back, it's whipped coffee time. So Bernita, it's all yours. Okay. So what we're going to talk about is, and we've talked about this before, but we're going to go back and we're going to talk about watermelon. And watermelon is one of those products that came over from Africa. I mean, in the ancient times, it made its way from Africa through Libya and on up to the Roman, to the Roman times, but it came over to the new found land or America in um, 1576 or 15, yeah, 1576, and they started growing them in Florida. Now they found this as a great source for, um, to bring over on slave ships. It was a source of, of nutrients for of water and sugar. Uh, initially when the watermelons were, gone, were, were grown, they were a yellow meat and not as sweet. So we have high birds now. So we have so many different variations of, of watermelon because those days they never had a seedless watermelon. Now we can't live without a seedless watermelon. And there's so much that you can do with watermelons. Now they are 91% water and 6% sugar. And I remember um, my dad who was a diabetic and he went to the doctor and the doctor said, you know, what are you doing? Your, your blood sh sugar is still up. And he says, I put all the way, all sweets. All I do is eat watermelon. And the doctor said, no, no, no. So check with your physicians in, about your watermelon and watermelon intake. Now, just some history on it also. In the Civil War, free Black people um, were, were used this and were into abolitionist slavery. And so they started to shun us and, and ridicule us for eating watermelon and said it was a sign of uh, racist uh, stereotypes and said it was a sign of laziness and, and um, it, it just got really bad and it brought an embarrassment to us from a, a fruit that was actually bought from our homeland. So I find absolutely no embarrassment whatsoever in eating watermelon at home or in public. I don't care about that. It's a connection back to the motherland. Um, so that's one of those fruits. So uh, I don't understand why something that we would bring over would be, we would ever be made ashamed of. But it's a, it's a great fruit and you can use it in so much, whether it's smoothies, fruit salads or however you choose to use utilize it but I still like just fresh watermelon as a dessert and it's great now if you want to change it up and add some flavor to it you can also add it to your lemonades but you can put lime over it and put um, some chili seasoning on it and it gives it a great flavor if you let it marinate for a minute. But that's the information on watermelon. Um, we are you back? So I'm gonna do some plating. I'm here. Okay, are you ready um, or? Um, if you have any, I'm just uh, gonna get my hot water. Oh, okay. Okay, because I'm going to do some plating. I have, I, 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 the more I think about it, I have turned into my grandmother. And my grandmother always has something on the stove, on something on the stove. So when we went to grandma's house, we could always, uh, we always knew that there was food to be had. She was always waiting on us. And this is before cell phones and information she just knew the day before we were coming and she would always have uh, something ready for us 
So I'm gonna make a plate and it's a typical Southern plate. And I'm gonna also fix my yam. And should have done that before I fixed my plate, but this is not my entire plate. I have to share because it's way too much. But this is a platter. Sir, but can you see? Okay. Here's my yam. This is my yam. Not my sweet potato, but my yam. And I'm like, it's baked in the oven and I baked it for 45 minutes just in the oven because they are thick. Well, and this is one that they've made a hybrid and, and um, it's orange on the inside. So when we get to changing and, and, and rearranging things. Now what I'm gonna do with mine is I'm very cautious with my diet these days because the older I get, the better I have to take care of my body. And I just use a couple of sprays of, um, of, of margarine. And then I'm gonna take my cinnamon and just add a little cinnamon to my yam my orange yam. Because if you see the regular yams, they look like trunks, like trees, because they're two river. And this is, a, again, this is one of those hybrid ones. So this is what I've done in just setting up a plate and uh, go to Texas. I made my Texas cornbread and it's called heavenly cornbread. Here's my okra. This is pickled okra that you could just buy in a jar and it's an easy snack as opposed to per se eating candy or something. I mean, if you, you need to change up, it's, that's a great snack for you. I fried chicken like my grandmother did. She would have fried chicken and cornbread waiting for us and then yam and the okra. So hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah. I have a great drink to go with it. So B, you got your right. ice now? I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, guys, it is coffee time. It is coffee time. And what I need is, and that was just about it, one fourth cup, which is equivalent to um, four tablespoons of boiling water. Make sure because I don't want too much because then I'd have to increase the other ingredients. And I have four cups of, I'm oh, sorry, not four cups, four tablespoons of instant coffee because this is uh, for two people. I have the equal amount of sugar, four tablespoons. And I'm going to turn on my blender. As you can see, it looks like whipped cream. It has stiffened up. I probably could go just another few seconds, but it is whipped and it is ready. So you can do this hot or cold version. I, I'm going to do the cold version. I'm using almond milk. You can use any type of milk that you want. Since I'm doing the cold version, I have my mugs are cold. I've had them in the fridge. And I put in about a cup. And wow, this, guys, let me get, get you guys to get a good look at that. Looks like chocolate mousse. Uh-huh, yeah. And so what I will do is top off my cold milk. And I'm going to dust with a little bit of vanilla powder on top of my whipped cream. And I can also use cinnamon on top. So I'll make another one. My whipped coffee on top. And I wanna, I like vanilla. Put a little bit of sprinkle of vanilla on there. And because this is a good one, I can add my whipped cream. 
and beautiful. Everybody's gonna be so impressed with what you can do with instant coffee, sugar, and boiling water, equal parts. Equal parts of coffee, instant coffee, boiling water, and sugar. So however many cups of this you wanna make. Um, can you use other types of milk? Um... Yes, any type of milk, almond milk, oat milk, uh, soy milk, lactate, cream milk, whole milk, 2%, 1%, whatever milk. Uh, <laughs> it works with all of them. So we have our coffees. We have our plate that you got a good look at with the stuffed yam. And here are my chips that I'm going to use again, color, color, color. And voila, here is my little tray that I'm going to set out for TV time. Okay, so that's it from this end. Enjoy Black History Month, what's left of it, but remember, Black history is every day, as well as everybody else's history. We should celebrate the diversity of this country, the diversity of this world, and we appreciate you being on